Today we have one of the big brands in the mechanical keyboard market with Cooler Master, and for the mainstream market which includes brands like Razer, Corsair, Logitech and all of them, I'd say Cooler Master is one of those brands that go past just the gamer side of things, but also pay attention to and cater for other users. In this video we have two of their Master Keys Pro RGB mechanical keyboards, being the M version and the L version. So I don't have the S, which is the 10 keyless version, but yeah, their lineup consists of those three sizes. Many of the features overlap, so I'm just going to do it in one video, and the Pro S version is pretty much the same as well, just smaller. Inside we get a black braided mini USB cable, and also an actually pretty nice wire keycap puller. We have the keyboard itself, and the user manual. And this is pretty cool as we have the keyboard wrapped up in this nice little black bag thing. It's not really a proper sleeve or bag as it's pretty thin and doesn't close, but it's more than adequate if you need to take your board somewhere. And here are the keyboards, the M being the smaller one at a medium size, and the L being the larger one. Most companies just have their two versions with one 10 keyless and then a full size, but a while back now, I don't know how long it's been, Cooler Master have had this size which slots in between, and to this day the Pro M still is a unique product. The two keyboards have an all black plastic enclosure with a smooth, nearly matte finish, so finger oils will show up easy if your hands are like that and the keycaps are of a similar nature. These are the thin ABS keycaps that are coated in black and then laser etched to get the legends, and these are just by far the worst keycaps companies use. These shine very easily, get dirty very easily, they feel cheap and will look even worse after a few months of use. Although the typeface or font is nice and simple, but it would be nice to see Cooler Master follow the rest of the market with double shot shine through keycaps. The case design of the Pro L follows the Pro S with this very simplistic and attractive rectangular design. The simplicity of this keyboard in the mainstream market is what actually makes it stand out from the crowd. The bezels are quite slim, the rectangular shape is quite sharp, and is less rounded than others. The side profile is again just super clean, and there's a part lying close to the bottom that is a bit different to usual, and it comes off as quite stylish to me. In the top right hand corner we have 4 extra keys, so we don't have that usual empty space, and these P1 to P4 keys are our profile keys which we'll come back to. On the bottom there are 4 flat rubber feet with 2 flip up feet that are also rubber tipped, and the tasteful and hidden Cooler Master branding. The Pro M however goes in a different direction, this keyboard has a much more aggressive aesthetic to it, which has been the case since its inception. In the top right hand corner we have the lock indicator LEDs and this section is sunken into the board slightly and then each indicator has its own thing and then on each side of the board there's a bunch of different cutout designs. The back and sides are actually pretty simple but it's the front that's more noticeable and this is just a personal taste thing. Many will like it while others will prefer a more neutral look like the Pro L version. And this is legitimately one of the reasons why this board is not recommended more because it does look a tad gamery, and again that's fine, but I reckon if you cleaned it up to look like the other two keyboards, and then fill up the top right hand corner, like on the Pro L, then it would be an even more popular product. But the Pro M is all about that layout. It basically combines a full size keyboard with a 10 keyless keyboard. The main bit of the keyboard with the alphas and stuff is completely normal, but the numpad and the nav cluster are combined, so when you first look at the right hand side, it just looks like a normal numpad, but also on the keycaps we have the whole nav cluster there, which includes home and insert, delete and all that, but then the arrow keys as well. So we can have it in either the numpad mode or on the nav cluster mode with the arrow keys, and to swap between them we just need to press the numlock key. So basically it's just like a more advanced 10 keyless keyboard, because it is only one column wider than a normal TKL. I personally really like it, even though I don't really use the numpad, because the versatility gives you more flexibility in how you want to use your keyboard. Both keyboards have a reasonable build. Both have completely plastic enclosures, but have steel mounting plates inside to give it that rigidity and the sturdiness that we expect. The Pro M comes in at just under a kilo at about 920 grams, and the Pro L is slightly heavier at 1050 grams. 
so both are decently hefty keyboards. Another feature of the keyboard is the RGB lighting. This has per key customizable lighting with the said 16.7 million color spectrum. The lighting can be customized on the keyboard itself, which is accessed via the FN key. There are four profiles that we can store lighting setups to. To change lighting modes, we press function and F4, revealing a couple of effects. And we can change the colors by pressing the red, green, and blue keys on F1 to F3. We can also create a custom setup by pressing function and F10, and this will allow us to choose a color for each key. To pick a color, we hold FN and customize the color by using the red, green, and blue keys, and you'll see the FN key previewing that color. And then you just press whatever keys you want to be that color, then we just save it to one of the four profiles by pressing function and one of those profiles. There can be proper applications for this, such as having important keys for various programs light up different colors, or even just simply lighting up the arrow keys a different color to make them more distinguishable. It's a pretty finicky process, so it's a good thing that we can also customize the lighting through the software, which is available on their website. And this is much of the same, but it's much easier to use and just gives you more control with the brightness and the speeds. And this is all done in real time, so if you change a color on the software, the keyboard will change with it without the need to press apply. Although one of the cool modes here is the equalizer mode that matches up with the audio from your device, which makes for a pretty cool display mode. For myself, I just like simple solid backlighting, and this allows me to do so, so you can easily match it up with your setup. The software is very light and unobtrusive, and you don't need to leave it running in the background, but the negative of that is, is that there is no macro customizability via the software, which is pretty annoying, as all the macros must be recorded on the keyboard itself. These keyboards come with the classic Cherry MX key switches, and you can pick from a variety of them, and these are the RGB version switches with the clear tops. On the Pro M, I have the Cherry MX Browns, which is a light tactile switch with a bump halfway. And then on the Pro L, I have the Cherry MX Speed Silvers, which I have used briefly before, but this is my first full keyboard experience with them. And these are supposed to be the gaming switches from Cherry, and feature a shorter pre-travel at 1.2mm, and a shorter overall distance of 3.4mm. And these are linear, meaning that there's no tactile bump or click, and are just smooth all the way down. Again, you have a range to pick from. The Cherry MX Speed Silvers are very similar to the MX Reds, but just bottom out sooner than you expect. But yeah, the stabilizers are terrible on this, so all these longer keys are quite rattly, especially the space bar which you're constantly going to use, and it honestly takes away from the experience, so if you can, lube them up. 
Alright, so I was only able to open up the Pro M, which was easy enough with a couple of Phillips head screws and prying the case open, but I could not open up the Pro L without the risk of damaging it because I had to give this to someone after this review, and it's probably one of the harder keyboards I've come across to take apart. Again, this is the Pro M, and here's the plastic top shell. Pretty standard and very flexible, but that isn't an issue when put together. The bottom shell is of a similar nature and is basically just to close off the bottom, so there's not much reinforcement going on there. There's very little overlap with these two plastic shells, which is a bit different to normal. Normally the two pieces would overlap each other a bit more, which in turn would make the bezels thicker. The mounting plate is made from steel, which gives the keyboard its weight and rigidity, and is coated in white. Here's the PCB and there's nothing that pops out. It's using SMD LEDs for the lighting, but yeah, everything looks clean here. And the two other keyboards should be very similar in nature for the internals. Overall, these keyboards are a continuation of what Cooler Master have been doing for years. They've kept the keyboard simple with the clean and professional designs, but have added the RGB customization to it. They have reasonably solid builds and perform well. The Pro M has kept that slightly aggressive design that may be attractive to you, but I'd love for them to upgrade that in the future, as well as having better keycaps. But being one of the big name brands, these are very accessible mechanical keyboards all around the world, and is why they're often recommended. You are paying that bit more for that RGB lighting, and these are a bit pricey, so if you don't need that RGB lighting, then the standard white LED versions are great. I feel like there are some very competitive alternatives in the market, so have a look around, but out of the mainstream boards, these are hard to beat.